This is the one thing almost every AI model gets wrong, and this one gets it perfectly. This isn't just text on an image, it's physically aware text integration. What you're seeing is the brand new Quen Image Edit model from the tech giant Alibaba. Now, if you've been following this space, you'll know that this isn't their first entry. This is the follow on from the Quen Image Generation model. The original model was interesting. It showed this same incredible world-class promise with the text. But for general image generation, it was frankly average at best. It fell well behind the dedicated generators like Flux Crea and was plagued by quality issues that classic plastic AI look. And this was true even when you were running the 40GB FP16 version. So the arrival of this dedicated edit model is a big deal. It promises more control, more precision and better results. The question is, does it deliver? Is this the upgrade that fixes the flaws of the original or is it just the same? Today we are putting this new model to the test. We will define its strengths, find its absolute limits and give you the brutal truth on whether it deserves a place in your professional workflow. So before we drop this model into Comfy UI, let's build our test plan. And to do that, we go straight to the source, the official project page hosted on Hugging Face. This is the blueprint. It's where the developers lay out the intended capabilities of their model. And it's our job to treat these capabilities as claims that need to be verified. First up are the major scene level edits. The primary claim is background manipulation. In theory, you can feed it an image and instruct it to completely replace the background generate a new one from scratch or remove it entirely. A powerful feature if it works. Next, it promises precise object and attribute control. This is the ability to add, remove or modify items within the scene. Now, as we established, the underlying Quen architecture has historically struggled with realism here. So we'll be looking very closely at the quality, the lighting, the integration and whether these edits still have that telltale AI look. And finally, the headline feature. The one that started this whole investigation, in image text editing. The ability to write, change and realistically integrate text into any scene, given the DNA of this model. Our expectations for this specific feature are admittedly very high. Alright, the claims have been noted, the test parameters are set, we're going to test its broad scene editing, its detailed object work and its specialist text ability. Let's get this loaded into Comfy UI and separate the marketing hype from the ground truth. Now for anyone new to this, Comfy UI makes it easy. When you load the workflow, if you're missing the models, the links to download them will appear right here. But let's quickly cover the essential components you need to get. There are three core files you'll need, all hosted on the Comfy.org Hugging Face repository, specifically for this workflow. First is the main diffusion model. Now for our test, I'm using the full BF16 version for the maximum precision. That's a 40 gigabyte file. I will also test the FP8 version. Next, you'll need the specific VAE for this model, which is the Quen Image VAE .safe tensors. And critically, you'll need the brains of the operation, the text encoder. And this is the 7 billion parameter Quen 2.5 vision language model. I'll be testing both the FP16 and the FP8 versions. Now to significantly speed things up, we are also adding one more file, a performance LoRa. The workflow is set up to use the four step lightning LoRa, which will drastically reduce our generation time. Once everything is downloaded, the folder placement is simple, but it has to be correct. The main model goes in your diffusion models folder, the VAE goes in the VAE folder, and the text encoder goes in the clip folder. You place the lightning LoRa in your LoRa's folder. Okay, with all the components downloaded and correctly installed, our test environment is ready. Let's get to our first test. So remember, when you load up this workflow, if you don't have the model files, you will be given the option to download them. Most of you will be using this method to download your models. You just got to make sure you place them in the right folders. You don't have to go search in the Hugging Face or the Comfy.org repos. I've just shown them here so you know where they are. So with the workflow on the canvas, we need to make sure our models are selected in our model loaders. So in your Diffusion Models folder, Make sure you have your FP8 version or your BF16 Quen Image Edit model selected. 
In your clip loader, make sure you have the Quen 2.5 Vision Language model selected. Again here, select the FP8 or the FP16 version, depending on which one you're using. And make sure your Quen image VAE is selected in your VAE loader. Now you might find that the LoRa loader is disabled. If it is, enable it either by selecting it and pressing Ctrl B or use the Enable Disable tab in the loader options on top. Once you've done that, just make sure your LoRa is selected in the loader. So that's great. Now we're ready to load in an image for editing. So first I'll just simply load in an image of Jackie Chan and we'll write a prompt. So this is the most basic of all tests and it's just to get the model warmed up and running. Remember the first generation takes the longest as the models have to be loaded into the VRAM. But subsequent generations are a lot quicker. So the prompt is he is wearing shades. Now because we are using our four step LoRa, we need to make a change in the K sampler. We need to set the steps to four. Now we have everything, we can run the workflow. And this was the most basic of all tests and the Quen model just nailed it. Now let's move on to something a bit more difficult. This is a classic failure point for AI, but the claim is precise object control. Our test is a simple instruction to change the pose. The prompt is, she is looking the other way over her left shoulder. So we want to see a frontal view of her and we don't want to change anything else. So I'm going to change the clip model to the FP16 version, but we're still using the four step LoRa. Let's run the prompt. And as you can see, it's done a wonderful job here. So it's still difficult to determine the character consistency as this was an AI generated image, but the model must use some kind of face mapping, which is extremely powerful. And then it uses that to generate the image. But let's try to turn a familiar face so we can check it. And I don't want to use Jackie Chan as he's probably one of the most famous people to come out of China. And this is a Chinese model. So he might have been used a lot in the training data. So let's try someone else. So I've dug deep into the archives and I've found this old photo that this guy used to make films once upon a time. Some of you might still remember him, but let's test our prompt. So similarly, we just want him to turn his head. So I think in this instance, the model does really well, even though the hairline is a bit out of place. Next, we'll upload a picture of this bike and the prompt is a side view of this speeding bike. Now, in this instance, the model does well. I think it's a pass. It has generated a side view of the bike. It's not rotated it through 90 degrees, but it's done good. We could try to reseed it if we wanted to. So all these generations have been one shot. I have not felt like I've needed to prompt the model again. These have been pretty good renders. So you can always try changing the seed and rerunning the workflow or trying different prompts if you're looking for better results. So next prompt is a side view of this tiger in a jungle. Let's see how it does. And as you can see, the model has absolutely no problem with that. And it's able to generate a pretty good image. And it's placed it in the jungle as prompted. Okay, so turn in the object, whether it's a person, a character or an animal, an object, seems to be no problems for this model. Next, we're going to try to change the background. So I've loaded up this image of this girl and we're going to place her on a beach. Now, I want to make it a little bit more difficult and we will place her on the beach. So she should be leaning on some railings with a volleyball game being played in the background. So here we've made it a little bit trickier. Let's see how the model handles that. So wow, that was good. That is definitely a pass. That is great prompt adherence and it has produced a pretty consistent character. The railings there and we also have the volleyball game going on in the background. No problems there. Okay, so let's try change some clothes. So I've loaded this picture of this young lady and we are going to change her into a white blouse and a black mini skirt. Now let's see how the model performs. So given its past performance, I've, I'm pretty confident it's going to do something good. So I do know it does have some limitations and we'll get to that later. But right now, yes, here you can see that the results are pretty outstanding. It has followed the prompt down to a T. We do have the white blouse and the black mini skirt and it's kept character consistency. Okay, so far it's been passing everything with flying colors. Now we need to up the game. So here is an image with a set of items and we have this young girl. And the first prompt is we just want to change the gun to a lollipop because I don't think she should be playing with guns. So let's see how it does there. And then we'll give it a nice tricky prompt. Okay, fantastic, no problems. Okay, so here's the tricky prompt. Place all the items inside this image, neatly inside the girl's bedroom, with her sitting in the bed, in her pajamas, reading a book. Let's see how it does. 
Okay, as you can see, we've finally broke this model. So I don't think it's done that bad, but there's quite a bit going on here. So no pyjamas, first of all. And second, the gun's gone. The Walkman appears twice. The bear is just about clinging on. And the plant is floating midair. She is reading the book and she is sitting in the bed. So overall, it's done not too bad. We could reseed and try again. But we won't. We will move on swiftly to our next test. And we are testing for changing text within an image. So here is a packet of noodles I created with Quen Image. We are testing to change the letters at the top, the BAM. I'm going to change it to Blimey. B-L-I-M-E-Y. Because why not? So how do you think it will do, guys? Do you think it can do this? Have some faith. And so look at that. That is an absolute great image. Can't complain there. The lettering is fantastic. It's absolutely hit it spot on. It's even styled it. What can I say? Product placement, advertisers, marketing, content creators, all noodle packers all around the world. You need to pick up your ears and listen to what's happening out here because this is revolutionary stuff and it's right here for you to download now and use on your machine for free. You don't even need to be online. This 40 gigabyte file is like a neural net. It can contemplate all the different possibilities and create an image from the 20 billion parameters within. And from here on, this is the baseline. It doesn't get any worse than this. This is free and open source. But I need to insert a caveat, and this is from my observations. As we've been pushing the model, we come to a critical observation. In some generations, you'll notice Quen struggles with the structural coherence, particularly with body proportions, sometimes resulting in skewed torsos or shortened legs. What's interesting is that this exact type of flaw has been observed in other models, including the early versions of the Flux Context model. It's easy to speculate that they might be working from the same corrupted or stolen base, but the reality is a bit more nuanced and it tells us a lot about the current state of AI. These models have completely different origins and architectures. The fact that they share the same flaws isn't evidence of theft, it's evidence of a shared industry-wide challenge. Anatomical realism is one of the final hurdles in image generation and many separate distinct models are tripping all over it in the same way. It's a fundamental problem that is yet to be fully solved by anyone. So, the verdict is clear. Quen Image Edit has proven itself to be a powerful, shockingly capable general purpose editor. It passed tests I fully expected it to fail. But the longer I look at these results, the more I realise. This feels like more than just an incremental upgrade. The way it understands context. The way it integrates light and texture. It's a fundamental shift. It makes you wonder if this is the level of performance they are releasing to the public, what kind of models are they building in private? What comes next? And how quickly is it going to change everything? If you want to be on the front line of that discovery, subscribe to Codebreakers. We'll figure this out together. Until next time, let's keep breaking the code.